What's going on everybody? Fetter here from 3D Print SOS. Welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we are going to be getting full clipper access to our Creality K1 machine. Honestly, it probably should have been in some kind of advanced mode so that you can get this level of access right when it's stock. However, just like I mentioned in the video popping up above me right now in my review, uh, the way that it's stripped down from all these complexities, it does make it much easier for them to not only service and manage and warranty, but also makes it really easy for beginners to get into 3D printing. So I totally understand their stance, but from my point of view, I know this machine runs Clipper. I want control of the machine to that level. In case I want to modify something, tune the machine, change some setting on the machine, I can't do that at the moment. But with Clipper access, we can do literally whatever we want. So be sure to only do this if you are up for the challenge. You can quite easily potentially mess something up in the printer's firmware. Now you can always restore the firmware, you can always turn it back to stock with literally one button, and I'll show you how to do that, but just keep that in mind. Also, we're doing this kind of live, no edits, so just keep that in mind. This is actually my uh, live setup that I do for streams, so I'm just gonna keep it in this format to get this video out there uh, to you guys as soon as possible. So let's just jump into my browser view. I know there's a lot to look at here. Give me a second to explain. So the camera right below me here, that's just going to the printer. In fact, here's my hand. You can see it'll uh, kind of rotate there. That's just so that you can see it. Nothing fancy is gonna be going on over there. We're not printing anything. Then above me over here, actually the last line in this document, which by the way, I'll have in its entirety in the description. These are the instructions translated from Russian on how to do that. And that last line is extremely important. All credit goes to K3D. I'll show his channel in a second. And then also Xander and YouTube Kebab. Uh, those three uh, guys got together a couple days ago and managed to get this hack over to us and I'll show you how to get it, how to do it. That's the point of this video. I wanna, uh, I wanna show it to more people uh, as you know, I had to translate this uh, from Russian. All right, but essentially here is what the, um, what, what it looks like when you type in the IP address into your browser. This is the level of control that Creality gives you to the machine. You can do things like uh, move the print head and you should be able to see it move down below. It might take a little while. I'm not sure why there's a delay on this, um, but it does take a little bit to do. There it goes, now it's finally moving. There you go, so you have this level of control where you can preheat the machine, you can see what file's on there, if it's printing, it gives you a little preview when it's there. You can see all of your files and you can import files, but that's about it. You can't do much else. Uh, there's no calibration, there's no modification, there's nothing. And it does look somewhat standard in terms of uh, fluid or mainsail. It's kind of their take on this front end, except on the left here, you don't see any kind of other settings. So after you do this modification or this hack, you will get access to this. And as you see, they're running in tandem pretty much. Here I can move the machine. You'll see it move. Uh, after it reads whatever the command is, you can see your temperatures. Very similar in that sense, but you can very clearly right away tell that this has uh, a lot more to it. This has a lot more body, uh, right? So right below here, we have your macros, the all important console. This is where you can send any kind of G code, any kind of command to the machine to calibrate it in any way that you wish. Uh, this is where all of your files are going to be, your fan controls, your velocity acceleration, so on and so forth, your G code. But most importantly, we have things like this. We can get into the printer's configuration file. This file is how the printer controls every element of it. Every fan, every LED, every motor, everything is here. And the reason why this is important is for example, uh, let's see, we have the X motor, um, the Z motor, the extruder. So if you wanted to, for example, give the extruder motor just a little bit more oomph uh, in case it felt a little bit weak, you could do that by doing it here. You can see pressure advanced controls. You literally have everything you know, at your fingertips. Um, and because of that, they don't want this level of access given to you right away because, well, you could potentially go in here as a beginner and mess it up. Um, but the beauty of this is that little file that we just looked at, you're able to make a change in there and then very quickly save it, restart your machine, and it would use that configuration. So you can literally do, like I mentioned, everything that you would like in the software or to the machine uh, through this software. So how do you get this level? That's what I wanna show you. 
and it's all thanks to this man right here, Dimitri Sorkin, also known as K3D. There's going to be a link, you can see it all the way up top there uh, in step one. You have to use this exploit uh, that, that you can download from his description. He has a link to his Telegram. I'm not going to be taking the files off of where he hosts them. That's, you know, he did that for us, and I don't want to take that away from him in any way. So uh, use that link above or below in the description. Uh, jump in on his channel to this video uh, and uh, go to his Telegram and download the two files that you need. They are the shadow G code file and then an HTML uh, document that looks like this when you open it. Now, this doesn't go online. This literally opens that, that file, that really simple HTML file from your computer. Um, and here you have a couple uh, things on the screen. So one is this is where you put in your IP. As you can see, I put an IP address from my machine into here uh, so that we can work with it. Then they have a way to unlock the SSH, method A and method B. And what this does is it takes that G code file and it opens it on the machine. And then just clicking one of these essentially calls for that root access tag. That's all the G code file is doing. And the reason why we have to do it that way is well, because we don't have any way to get uh, this console uh, on the machine. So the only way to send G code uh, to that machine is uh, through a G code file. So that's actually how this little thing works. Uh, it sends that G code file with the root access uh, to the machine. Uh, and it's a really just simple way to do it. Then if you mess something up or you don't want to do this anymore, or there's a warranty thing or something along those lines, you can always click reset and that will factory reset your machine. You'll have to go through the initial steps uh, of calibration, you'll have to get it back online. And actually for me, I spent two days trying to get this to work and I couldn't get it working, which is one of the reasons why I wanna make this video in case uh, somebody else tries to do it and it's not working. I actually had to use this to reset the machine to factory spec, uh, reset it up, get it online, and then it worked from the first try. But I was having a lot of issues beforehand trying to get this to work. So here we go. Here is how I made it work. Essentially, you have to go to uh, your browser. You have to type in the IP address of your machine. And in here, you click import and you choose the shadow dot uh, uh, G code and you hit upload. I know that little pop-up didn't show up here, but there it is. So now this file is here. And we're gonna click on it and we're gonna let it run and it takes just a second to upload. It doesn't actually print anything, it doesn't do anything, but it injects that G code. And I'm not gonna show it on the screen. You can right click, open it with whatever software you want, see what it is. Uh, you know, you can be cautious about it. Same with the HTML, but they don't communicate with the internet in any way outside of what Creality uh, is pulling from you. Uh, if you went ahead and attached it to Creality Cloud in the first place. but. All we do is load this file and get it running. At least that's how I had to do it. Then we go back right here and we click method A and method A is just gonna do the same thing we just did and it's gonna give you a message saying it's successful. If that doesn't work, try method B and it's just going to upload it itself and try that again. Uh, but, and, and essentially what we're doing here is we did method B manually and that was the only way I was able to get it working. But you get a little message that says you now have root SSH access. So then after you do that, nice, and easy, we're gonna be pulling up two things here. So I have right here a terminal window because I'm on a Mac. You can use something like Putty uh, on a Windows machine to pull up a terminal window. And then here I have the instructions that'll be down in the description of this video. And there's a couple couple things here that are important we'll go through as we go. So in this uh, SSH window, I have to type in SSH-P22, uh, that's the port that we're using for SSH, and then root at, uh, and then the, um, the actual uh, IP address of your machine. I'm not gonna give you a tutorial on how to SSH. That should be pretty easy to find online. But essentially we get it and asks for the password. The password is Creality. And there we go. Once you see this green, that means we have root access and we're actually logged into the machine over the internet. So the other thing that you need to do is you need to type in this. You need to type in uh, and I'm just gonna copy it here. You don't need the actual quotes. That's just so that you see uh, what we need to type in. So here we go, I'll paste it in and nothing will happen. That's actually what you needed to do. And this command is taking this file and it's copying it to here. And that's where we need it to pull it up and modify it. Then we're going to go to the next step 
and that is going to be using a word editor to edit this file. And we're gonna be using V editor because I couldn't get uh, anything else installed beforehand, so that's what we're gonna be using. And there's some special commands that I have there on, under note. Uh, it says V editor commands, I's for edit, uh, uh, colon W is save, colon Q is quit. So we're gonna open this file. And here we are going to just use our mouse to kind of come down here and these two files right here, which you'll see in the uh, in the thing right there, is make directory and start the daemon. Th those are going to have one of these next to it. They're gonna have uh, these, uh, these symbols next to it. And what we wanna do is you wanna click I on your keyboard. That puts you in edit mode, just like I'm doing here. And we just remove them. Once both of these are removed, the hashtags are removed, like you see on my screen, we are going to hit escape. And then we're gonna type in colon uh, W to save. And then once again, colon Q to quit. And that's how you edit that file. You go I, delete those two, then W, then Q. And what I always like to do is I go back in and double check to see if it actually worked, if it's saved, and well, make directory and start are fine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, cl and click colon Q to quit out of the editor. It's that easy for the first one. Now there is another file that we need to find and edit, and that's the uh, Moonraker service file. So I'm gonna copy it right here. We're gonna go back to SSH. I'm gonna jump in, and this one is a little bit trickier to find, but it's also in here. We're gonna use our mouse to continue going down, down, down to where it says start, and that's right over here. This file, once again, will have a hashtag right over here on start, and all we need to do is click I on our keyboard, remove it like this. We're gonna hit escape, same thing, colon W to save, then colon Q to quit. There you go. And I'm gonna once again, open it again, and we're gonna scroll down to make sure that that's saved and that's all good. And it is right over here. So we can do Q again to get out of there. It's that easy. That's pretty much it. The only thing that you have to do now is, well, restart your machine. So once you have fully rebooted your machine, you should be able to go to your browser. It'll open, by the way, exactly the same way as it would normally. You go to your browser, but on top, uh, after your IP address, you put colon 4408. Uh, as it says right there in the instructions right above my head right there on the last step, and that will pull up Fluid. And well, now you have full access to your Creality machine and you can quite literally do anything. The only thing is, just like on the Chitty Tech Smart 3, for example, or the Chitty Tech uh, X Plus 3, when you're, when you're doing this, jumping between uh, things on the screen and jumping here could have a, a strange effect because they don't actually talk with each other. If you're uh, working within Creality here, you're working within their ecosystem and everything talks together and you're more than capable of still using this untouched, like nothing is nothing is going to, uh, I mean, everything is going to function and work. However, this is a little bit separate and using them together at the same time might cause some issues. So if you're going to use this, just use this as your front end. You no longer technically need the screen, but just know that you can use the screen and start prints there. You can uh, go to your app or go here and start your screen. They're not actually working together. They're a bit separate. This directly connects to your board and this connects to the rest of your printer if that makes sense. So there you go. Now you have full access. You can go ahead and, and change things around. Uh, one of the other examples I can give you is if uh, you want to use uh, Nathan Builds Robots mod to add your own extruder to the machine, you can now come in here and change the E-steps uh, rotation in this case uh, to set up your extruder however you like. Uh, let's say yours was under extruding and you want to calibrate the extrude the E-steps, you can do that. Uh, if you want to redo your pressure advance so that it's not generic, you can go ahead and run pressure advance on as many different filaments as you want. Uh, there's just things like that. You literally now own your machine entirely when you have this kind of access. Though there's another part to it where technically because Creality is using Clipper, they're supposed to share and open their modifications because they are using Clipper, as you can obviously tell, but they have not done so, at least as far as I know. Uh, so having this to me is how it should be. I, like I said before, I do understand why they did this. It's because 
uh, as a beginner, you could go in there, delete a colon, and something is going to get messed up. And that is going to be a nightmare for warranty work and being able to help, help through a chat or email, uh, things of that nature. So I understand why they did it. That's why I always say it would be nice just to have uh, you know, an advanced tab for people like me who know what they're doing in there, who want that level of control. But now we have best of both worlds. So there you go. And like I said, a huge thank you to K3D, huge thank you to Xander, huge thank you to YouTube Kebab. Hopefully I'm saying all those names correctly. Uh, I think it's awesome what you guys have done for the community. And this, in my opinion, changes my entire view on the machine. In my opinion, this really takes it to the next level and takes it away from just a good machine for beginners, but also intermediate level to expert level because you have full control, you can do anything that you like. All right, guys, hopefully you like this video. Let me know in the comments what you like, what you don't like, all of that fun stuff. Also, a huge thank you to my Patreon and YouTube members. Uh, you guys make it easy to continue making uh, these videos, so I really appreciate it. If you guys are interested in uh, building me, building a Voron, uh, we're doing that on a channel through live streams, so definitely join. It's actually using this exact setup uh, as we speak here, uh, and uh, you know it's a lot of fun to do it with you guys live. All right, that's all for me. Uh, thank you, everybody, and uh, I'll see you in the next one, and I'll see you in the comments later. <laughs>